know, the fact that my son now is his life's on the line because of my wife's mistake three years ago in going out all night and falling asleep and wrecking a car on the way home. I don't think that's fair to him, I, as fair as, or as unfair as it was to me. You know, I feel like I'm infected today because two years ago I decided I was going to go back with my wife for the children's sake, and that's exactly what I did. What did you do? Cut my foot. Where? We have to go up and investigate this now. For families with AIDS, the simplest childhood accidents take on enormous significance. Things which most people ignore oh, or treat lightly produce tremendous stress and tension. Oh, going barefoot now. These stresses are also reflected in the fear and anger in the community, which sometimes explodes. One night, my brother and I went out. We came across a group of young men who were hanging out, drinking beer at a swimming hole. One guy turned around and he said, these are those aides, so-and-so. I won't even tell you what he said. He said Let's kill him. That's what he yelled. And I looked at my brother, and he looked at me, and a guy grabbed me, like right here. He had his fingers in me from behind. He grabbed me and put his fingerprints in me, and another one grabbed me here. And they all started yelling, kill him, kill him. More than that, but the bottom line was kill him. Everything was kill him. And I thought, well, I'm getting out of here. And I ran for my car as fast as I could, and as I was running, I punched one off one side and one off of another. And I got to my car, and luckily my keys were in it. I just turned it on, I put it in reverse, I turned it around, and the car was jumping up and down because it was a real rocky, ravine-ridden parking lot. And there were people hanging on my car. They were actually crawling over my car. And I was driving, looking this way, and the car was going up and down. Last thing I saw, my brother, he had his keys in his hand, and he was headed for his car. And I hit the road, which was a pretty steep incline, turned my car onto the main road and I saw people coming up over the bank. They were climbing over the bank to get at me. And I saw one of the younger ones there take a rock and just pitch directly at me. And luckily I had my foot on the gas pedal and I picked up speed and the rock went right dead center through the middle of the back window on the passenger side. And then I just felt glass spray all over me. There was glass everywhere in the car. It was on the front dash. It was under the seat everywhere because when a window shatters, you know how it just goes to pieces. There was glass everywhere. And I drove immediately home, as fast as I could, and called the state police. And my brother was glad I didn't have my gun in a way. But as excited as it was, I never saw in all my life a more enraged group of people. They were crazy. They were absolutely out of their minds, just like wild Indians on the warpath. You know, and I don't normally get, I didn't get mad, but I did get scared, because they would have killed us. If they had caught us, there's not one shred of doubt in my mind that they would not have killed us. AIDS affects its victims in many different ways. Unfortunately, in Donna's situation, the infection manifested itself in the brain. She doesn't want me to come back in a week. <laughs> The effect of AIDS dementia eventually led to her leaving her family against the wishes of the children and myself. Of the few friends still involved in our life, we will always be thankful of the support we received from Robin. When people ask me what I do, I tell them I'm a professional parent. I worked hard all my life for my house, and I have no intentions of moving. When it comes to neighbors in the community, they are also being victimized by the AIDS epidemic. The Hare Krishnas are talking about building a walled city in Jim Thorpe, and I was thinking, I'll leave and run it to the Hare Krishnas. If they hated me being here, they'll really hate Hare Krishnas being here. I've already seen the realtors in this region take it upon themselves to have to inform everyone that I live here. You know, even when they're selling his house, you know, they're going to tell all the prospective buyers. In essence, they're going to take their fears and push them onto the prospective buyers. 
I'll deal with that when the time comes. It's home. It's home. I guess if I wasn't ha happy with it, I wouldn't be here. You know, that's what some people have said to me. If you dislike this community so much, why don't you move? You know, and I think if you dislike me so much, you can move. You know, but I'm not going anywhere. My home too. What are you going to do with it? You just have multicolored pastel Play-Doh. If you mix too much of it, you never have blue or white or yellow again. Keep it out of the road. My empty refrigerator. Empty hand. Was the elderly, if nothing else, at least had the opportunity to live their life mm -hmm. where the kids didn't get that. You know, I'm happy for my 28 years. What about the kids? They didn't get anything. You know, not even a start, not even adolescents, some of these ch children. And that's the concern. You know, that's where the real concern comes from. You know, at least make the time they have, however long or short, quality time. You know, and uh, I don't, I feel this is sorry for the homosexuals, you know, it's like all of a sudden there's a reason, you know, that they should get this. I don't buy that. You know, they didn't ask for this. They surely didn't create it while they did have an effect in spreading it. It's still not their fault. Um, what do you want to get on the Christmas tree? Zap it. It comes off. Is that all you want? Go ahead. 